Hello everyone and welcome back to, for the first time in a while, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Thank you again for the understanding regarding a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, videos are still going to be a little bit slower for the remainder of the year, but we'll be back full speed in 2023. Today we have a 20 threat match between the new Sentinels affiliation and the Hydra affiliation making their second showing, but this time being led by their true leader. But we'll go over all that as we take a look at the two sides. So here are our Sentinels today being led by the new largest miniature in the range to date. Uh, taller than Dormammu, taller than the Hulkbuster who's cheating anyway because he's bouncing or jumping. But we have the Sentinel Prime, MK4 Prime, right at the back there, the tallest of the three. He's joined by two regular MK4 Sentinels on either side of him. We also have Cassandra Nova who is part of their affiliation bonus and then just to fill out the extra couple of points bullseyes here but he's going to be augmented by a card we'll cover uh, in more detail at deployment but their tactics cards are bringing today online and operational scrap metal directive one efficient machines and under your skin that's the important one the affiliation bonus for the prime involves things happening when the days and or kill it might just be a days can't quite remember but it's more power generation for them and we'll cover what they do as they act in the game so there is a lot of minis in the Hydra team this time, in fact this is probably the most miniatures on a side we've ever had on the channel, 7, although one of them is a hired goon, which doesn't really count because it's included in the leader cost. On that note, they're being led by the new Red Skull, what's his name, Red Skull Master of Hydra, and his affiliation bonus is all about power gain. In the power phase, anyone contesting or securing an objective or holding an objective, get one extra power. So he's just all about that power generation, which is very fitting for, for his world domination ideals. And he comes included with the Hydro Troopers at the back here that you can respawn if they die. They follow the normal rules for hired goons. They'll be starting on the table though. And he's joined by uh, a bunch of people, all the Hydro people. So we have Baron Zemo, we have Baron, uh, not Baron Zola, uh, Armin Zola. Then we have Sin, his daughter, then we have Baron Strucker, and we have Crossbones over there. So a lot of bodies, and they'll be going up against the big Sentinels. And their tactics cards are over here, just come over here. Victory Assured, Occult Research, World Domination, Inevitable Betrayal, and Two More Shall Rise. I'm sure you got a glimpse of the uh, missions being played today, but just to cover them officially. The Extraction, 17 Threat, Spider Infected, Invade Manhattan. So there's five spider people on the table. You can only hold one at a time, one VP for each one held for doing so. In the power phase, there's a chance that they squirm and you get moved by your opponent. Hilariously, there's no size limit or anything like that on that, so even if it's a Sentinel Prime holding a tiny human in his hand, there's a great possibility that he'll just get shuffled. <laughs> Very strange, but that's how it works. The actual threat value being played is on the Secure, which is the uh, Terrigen Cloud. Two clouds, two VP for holding a cloud during the cleanup phase. However, it will also damage and poison anyone within two, although the Sentinels are not being uh, not able to be poisoned, so they'd only take the one damage. So we pull back here, the Sentinel Clouds, uh, the Sentinel Clouds, <laughs> the Terrigen Clouds are on either flank of the table, and then we have a Spider Infected, Spider Infected, Spider Infected, Spider Infected, and one on the roof here. Also, to keep this fair, if a Sentinel wants to go up here and try and get this building, we're just going to remove the skylight just to keep it fair, because otherwise they can't really stand there because they wouldn't be able to stand flat. Um, with that, yeah, we'll get both teams deployed and then be back. So here we are at deployment with everything set up. We'll cover that tactics card in a second. The Sentinels are to your left and do have first activation, although they will have a pass if they want to use it. And Hydra is to your right. Let's cover the Hydra setup first. We've got Zemo down here with Zola and Crossbones. He and, <clears throat> pardon me, he and Strucker both have Strategic Genius, so it pays to separate them so that you're spreading out the rerolls. And on that note, he is over here with Red Skull and his Hydra Troopers, who are set up over by the car there. So the Sentinels, we've got the Prime down here with one of the MK4s, and then Bullseye just beside him. And on that note, Under Your Skin has been played on Bullseye, but you actually do it before the game starts, but you know, we'll cover it now. When you include this card in your squad, choose one of the non-Sentinel affiliated characters in your squad. It is now a Sentinels affiliated character, which Bullseye now is. If your squad is using the Sentinels affiliation, when the chosen character is deployed, it gains a Nanite token, which we do have. Uh, it's going to be kept on this card, rather than cluttering up the table, but that's the, the token the game comes, or the box comes with. And the reason you do this is because the character with the Nanite token gains flight, immunity to poison and bleed, so the poison is important for the Terrigen Clouds. And uh, they're just passive, 
so uh, Bullseye's now flying around the table, immune to poison and bleed, which is pretty cool. So on that note, we'll jump into Battle Round 1. Well, as we start Battle Round 1, it would help if I also showed where Cassandra Nova and the other uh, MK4 Sentinel are. They're over this side of the table on the other flank, aiming for the, the objectives down here. The Sentinels did opt to use a pass, so it was over to Hydra and they activated Armin Zola. He only moved small and did so. He was originally going to go up, pay one power, pick up the spider infected there, which he did do. Uh, and then he was going to hide behind the car for cover, but he is bigger than the car, so we can't. So instead he just went after the Terrigen Cloud to hold it. That does mean he's probably going to have to take some hits, but hopefully he can weather the storm. Oh, one other thing of note, at the top of each turn, the new Red Skull has to pick whether or not he buffs his energy defense or mystic defense for the turn. He is picking energy defense this turn, despite Cassandra being on his side of the table because of her limited range. Uh, we'll see what happens going forwards for future turns though. The Sentinels activated but sent Bullseye in first to the newly upgraded and Nano Machine Sons uh, Bullseye and he moved forwards his medium, put him within one of the closest spider infected, he paid his one power to pick it up and that put him within range 4 to chuck some throwing knives at Zola and Zola again totally forgot he has rubbish physical defence so it's only 4 dice, generates 1 flat power for Bullseye Got a couple of crits in there though, and the uh, two block dice were not successes. So Zola just went and took four damage, which is not great. Thought he was relatively safe because the spender on the Sentinels is a physical attack, but they can't do that turn one. And their normal attack is energy, which he's got four against. So, bit of a miscalculation there, Bullseye actually doing things. Well, after Zola took a bit of a surprising pounding, Sin activated for Hydra next. She moved medium and then suffered impaired movement down to small to clamber up the building in the middle of the map here to get just within one of the central spider infected and paid her one power to pick it up. She's not in range to give crossbones an immediate activation, it's range 4. I think she's just out, not that she wanted to really, there's no need. Uh, so it's back over to the sentinels. We're down this end of the table because the sentinel will finally activated for the sentinels so we can cover a little bit of what they do. They're all on hulk sized bases, they all move small, but obviously the big base makes up for that somewhat. So the MK4 sentinel on this side of the table here, he moved forward small, which put him within range to pay one power and pick up the spider infected that was on top of the daily bugle stand there he then moves small again to contest the Terrigen cloud now the interesting thing about all the primes and uh, all the sentinels including the prime rather they only get one power in the power phase same as normal characters however when they end their activation their power core kicks in and they gain more power two to be exact unless they're on their wounded side and then different stuff happens between the primes and the normal ones so this sentinel that just ended his turn spent his one power he's now immediately getting two back. Next up for Hydra was good old slow crossbones, moving small twice towards the Terrigen Cloud Sora, but uh, Zola was in the way a little bit. He's just begging to get shot at so aggressive can kick in, but that's where he's ending his turn. Cassandra Nova activated and she was on the scaffolding here. She moved forward medium twice, she has fly, so she wasn't suffering impaired movement or anything like that, and just went over here to help support the Sentinel to protect the uh, Terrigen Cloud there. She isn't immune to poison if I remember rightly. Uh, she does have healing factor and flight, yeah, no immunities to status effects, so she's going to be susceptible to the poison from the cloud. But she wants to be near the Sentinels just because some of the tactics cards specific to her involve her taking advantage of Sentinels getting destroyed or doing some other stuff, so we'll hopefully see that as the match continues. Red Skull Master of Hydra activated, which means his Hydra goons have to go first. They moved small, they did so, and moved once, and then from where they were, their basic attack is only 4 dice, the same as every other hired goon, but it's range 4, so they can't shoot at Cassandra because she's got stealth, but they could shoot at the Sentinel, and they did so, and he fully blocked the damage. Then, we actually go with Red Skull. He also moves small, unfortunately, although he is on that medium-sized base. So he moved up, paid one power, picked up the spider infected there, and then moved again, however, because he had to go round the goons, because the goons activate before the, the host, or the, the leader, uh, he couldn't quite get within one, so he's not contesting the Terrigen Cloud, but he is getting, trying to get stuck in there. He's, he's pretty tough. Uh, four physical defense and then six to either energy or mystic, depending on what he picks at the top of a turn. Seven health. Like, he, he's no pushover, and he can put out a lot of damage. So the last of the regular Sentinels activated. Move forward small to where you can see him right there, putting him within range four of his basic energy attack. It's only four dice, but you can sink in up to three extra power to add in more dice. He put in his one power to bring it up to five dice energy. Did it on Zola and got through two damage. 
which was enough on top of the hilariously high damage bullseye did to him, that Zola is dazed and has dropped the spider infected he was holding, dropped it right there, not within distance to pick it up, and when his turn ended he also gained two more power from his power core kicking in. So they kind of gave up hope of holding the Terrigen Cloud there because Zola moves long, um, I mean Zemo moves long, so he can just get in there, but wasn't expecting Zola to go down turn one. Well, second last activation for turn one for Hydra was Baron Zemo. Moved long and then moved about medium for a second one. He didn't need his full distance. Body blocking the Terrigen Cloud by standing in front of it, hoping to stop the Prime from being able to get in just as easy. And he paid one power and picked up the Spider Infected that Armin Zola dropped. And it is over to the Sentinel Prime to be the final activation for the Sentinels this turn. So the Sentinel Prime activated and moved forwards small. Love how imposing he looks compared to the average size of your like normal dude characters. But his his uh, abilities are basically the same as a normal one, just ever so slightly better. So his base attack is that same energy blast that just got done by the other Sentinel, but its base number of dice is 5 energy as opposed to 4. And he did put in 1 extra power, the power he started with, to bring that up to 6. Shot Zemo in the face got him for two damage all said and done and then at the end of his turn also generates two more power. So with that the Sentinel's turn is done and it is over to uh, Strucker all the way over there to take us to the end of the round entirely. So Baron Strucker moved forwards medium and knowing that there was no way to claim the Terrigen Cloud on this side of the flank this turn he instead opted to just fire an energy blast slash fireball from where he was because it's range three and he could reach Cassandra Nova so her stealth didn't apply Managed to get her for 2 damage, but did not get the incendiary uh, wild trigger on her there. So that is the end of the turn. So then about the round 1, there's a lot of post-turn stuff we have to cover because of the crisis cards being played. Obviously Zola will be flipping his card to his day side as we cross over. But in terms of victory points, let's cover that first. Hydra is holding the lead barely. They hold 3 of the 5 Spider Infected for 3 VPs and 1 Terrigen Cloud for 2 more, taking them to the 5. The Sentinels hold the other two Spiders and the other Terrigen Cloud, taking them to four, and the Sentinels have priority next turn. But the Terrigen Clouds move based on the opponent of whoever is not claiming it, moving it. So this one was moved, and then when it ends its move within two, anyone within one takes one damage and is poisoned. Couldn't get it to reach Zemo and Crossbones, so that one's been moved there. So just Zemo poisoned and taking one damage. The one over here though, that was being held by the Sentinels, Hydra just moved it closer to the scenery there to make it harder for the Sentinel to help hold. No one is within one, so it didn't deal any damage. Then we had to cover Spider Infected moving, squirming, and it's if you roll a hit crit or a wild on a single die, you get moved within small by your opponent. And the only person to get moved by it is the one that's now missing from up there, it was Sin. And she's been placed small down here. So that's where she's ended up, and with that, we can go into Battle Round 2. So at the top of Battle Round 2, we actually have a couple of things to cover really quickly. The Hydra affiliation bonus kicks in from Red Skull, Master of Hydra, so anyone contesting or holding an objective token gained one extra power. In this case, it was Red Skull, Sin, and Zemo. And also, a power phase tactics card is being played by the Sentinels. It is Efficient Machines, thanks to taking that damage. Cassandra Nova played, uh, paid 3 to play this card. Until the end of the round, allied sentinel characters within 3 of Cassandra Nova treat shield results as wilds instead. Hoping to let the uh, the sentinel next to her do a really big spending attack this turn with that little bonus of being able to treat shields as wilds. We'll see if it pays off. So no passing, battle round 2 for the sentinels got started with Cassandra Nova activating and at the end of her turn she healed 1 because of her healing factor, just covering that now in case I forget. She activated, she moved medium flying over the stand here, it landed there, staying within just of uh, the range 3 of the Sentinel there. Attacked by paying 1 power into Sin using her mind manipulation or mind control attack. 6 dice Mystic, although Sin does actually have decent Mystic defense, she's got 4, but still managed to do 2 damage to her and once it's resolved you advance under speed. So uh, she was sent even further into the back lines, haha <laughs> she's in danger. That's two of her four health gone, and she is holding one of the spider infected, so there's a good chance of being able to take her out. We'll see how it plays out. Well, sensing an in imminent daze, Sin actually activated, and rather than running back, she decided to get in there. She moved medium, then paid four power for Make It Personal into Bullseye, hoping for that wild and a crit trigger to let her do it again. Six dice physical becomes six dice mystic. Two loads of attacks on a character with four health as well. 
Should really have taken him out, but the attack wasn't that great. Did not get the wild in the crit trigger. All said and done, did one damage to Bullseye, so he is still standing. And Sin's in a lot of bother. But we're not quite on the next activation yet, because Bullseye paid two power for parting shot. After attack against him is resolved, you deal one damage to them and then run away small. So he did that, and now he's hiding behind his big brothers. Well, after doing the parting shot extra damage to Sin, Bullseye was the one that ended up activating. He chucked some throwing knives at her, dealt no damage, so he paid one power for I Never Miss, which just makes it do one flat damage, which was enough that she is dazed. She dropped her spider infected right back there. Then for his other action, he moved away medium. He's been a little bit of a coward. He's going to force Hydra to come and get him if they want the spider infected he's holding, assuming it doesn't squirm at the end of the turn, that is. And yeah, he's just backed off over there. Armin Zola activated for Hydra, moved up small to try and block the far side of the Terrigen Cloud they're hoping to hold on to this turn. Then he spent three, I believe it is, on experimental enhancements. Two dice to his next attack, but if it, the roll inclu includes any skulls, he takes one damage, hence there being one damage there, because it did. Then he spent two on focused ESP box blast, and did it on the regular Sentinel that was in front of him. Now, it, it has an advance included in it, and Sentinels all have a role called Sentinel Programming, where they're immune to being pushed or advanced, by mystic attacks or superpowers, but this is not either of those, this is just an energy attack. So presumably it still applies, even though it acts like a, you're being mind controlled or whatever. So he got advanced back here, and he did appallingly on his defense roll and took 5 damage. Now he's still standing, the regular sentinels have 7 HP each on their healthy side. So he is still standing, but Zola got him good. So rather than activating the Sentinel that just got pummeled by Zola, the Sentinel Prime decided to activate and this is where he can show off what he can do. So he started by doing his Suppression Protocols MK2, which the regular ones have as well. His costs one more power, up to four I believe, but adds in one extra dice, it's nine dice physical. And he did it on Zola who has two physical defense, so a casual seven damage got through to the good Doctor. And that means he is out of there. He is just gone in turn two, which is pretty incredible. Doesn't gen generate any power or anything like that. He had one power left sitting on him. He spent that to boost up his basic attack to six dice energy. Smacked that into Zola. Not Zola. Zemo. Too many similar names. Uh, Baron Zemo did two damage, and that was enough to daze him. He generated one power on that for the damage dealt, which he spent to pick up the spider infected that Zemo dropped. And then when he ended his turn, he gained two more power. So it's very much like mo they work on momentum, which is pretty fun. They just uh, have a fairly lackluster turn one, which doesn't really matter. And then from then on, they're just generating power like nobody's business. And you can see what it does right there. Red Skull and his hired goons activated. The hired goons moved in small just to claim the Terrigen Cloud. They can't interact with or hold extractions, but they can work with secures. So they're sitting there, they shot their pistols, four dice, range four into the Sentinel, managed to do one damage to him, and then Red Skull himself activated, he moved in to also claim the Terrigen Cloud, moved in such a position to limit the options for the Sentinel even being able to get near it, and then he did his basic attack, which is called Blitz Strike, it's six dice, range three, physical, and on a wild or a wild and shield or wild and hit, it does different things, although one of them is a push, but it's size three or less, and Sentinels are size four, so, uh, yeah, size four, and I think, the yeah, the Prime is size five. So either way, he, he still did the 6 dice physical, though they only have 3 defense dice against physical attacks, which doesn't make much sense to me, but whatever. And he took 3 damage from that, so he's hurting a little bit, and Hydra definitely have control of that Terrigen Cloud. Well, the Wounded Sentinel on the left flank of the table activated at first, the one that Red Skull just smacked. Started by spending 3 power on his suppression protocols, not quite as good as the Primes, one less cost though, but one less die, 8 dice physical. Did that on Baron Strucker. Managed to get him pretty well for 4 damage, although he hasn't activated yet and he has healing factor 1, so he'll be healing a little bit of that. Then for his other action, he retreated small in this direction, knowing full well he's just going to get murdered if he stays over there, unfortunately. And he is holding one of the spider infected, so it doesn't pay to suicide like Sin did, basically. So because of all the stuns and daisies and whatnot, the Hydra side only has crossbones and Strucker left, I think. Yeah. So of those two, it was Crossbones to activate. He moved small to kind of block off the Terrigen Cloud a little bit here, and just to control it as well. Then he did a basic strike on the Sentinel Prime, managed to do one damage to him, which isn't much. But during his turn, uh, it seems like you play this card during a character's turn. A little unclear on that, it's a bit weirdly worded. Uh, World Domination is a Hydra card, so if we just have a quick look at it here, it's an active, so it seems like it doesn't say clean up phase or power phase or anything. If you control all secure objective tokens, which they now do, 
uh, Red Skull, his goons, whatnot, are holding the other Terrigen Cloud, Crossbones is holding this one, uh, you may play this card. You gain one VP for every two secure objective tokens you are securing, so there will just be one because that's the most you can do when there's only two of them. Additionally, each character you control gains one power for every two secure tokens you are securing. So it seems like you just play that. That's the most they can ever get from it, so there's no reason not to play it now. So that takes Hydra up to six victory points uh, immediately. But the turn still isn't over yet though. We still have that other injured Sentinel to go. So the most wounded Sentinel moved small over in this direction and then used his suppression protocols on crossbones. Would have done three damage, no wilds though to do any stance effects which is very annoying. Uh, he paid one for a nerve to pain to reduce that down to two damage. So then to get him off the point, which is why he's right smack dab in front of the Sentinel there, he used restraint cables for two I believe it is. You pick target with line of sight, pull them towards you small. And that means that currently, uh, well it definitely is going to be true at the end of the turn because Strucker can't get over here. And no one's holding that Terrigen Cloud, because Zim was dazed, and the Sentinels aren't close enough. And that also means that uh, Spider Infected there is not getting claimed this turn either, so that's points on the floor just being wasted. So, satisfied that the Red Skull and his goons can kind of hold that area, Strucker moved medium, right to where you can see him there, just outside of range 2, literally millimetres out of range 2 to do his Spender attack on Cassandra. So instead he just did his basic Plasma Blast, did pretty well with it, did 3 damage, and more importantly got the Incinerate on her as well. That's 4 damage on her in total, I believe, yeah, of her 7 she has on her healthy side, so she is uh, getting close to being dazed. And that takes us to the end of the turn, with neither of those objectives claims, although I think it still is going to be a pretty high scoring uh, round. That was very bloody as well, let's uh, go see. So then about round 2, we do have a lot of stuff to cover because of the objectives moving and whatnot, and Sin and Zemo will be flipping over their cards. So the Terrigen Cloud down here got moved by the Sentinels, they moved over here, dealt 1 damage and poisoned... Uh, crossbones. Actually, you know what, let's cover the scores first before we cover where everything moved. So, Hydra only have one of the Spider Infected, it was on Red Skull for one victory points, but they held both the Terrigen Clouds for a total of four. So they gained five, taking them with the extra one they gained during their turn to 11. And if that card was meant to be played now, the situation did not change, so it still would have scored. So, no problems there. The Sentinels have three of the five Spider Infected, so they gained three from that, but none of the Terrigen Clouds, so that only took them up to... Is it 8 that took them up to? I'm going to have to check. Uh, 7, sorry, 7, with 1 just sitting there on the field. Actually, you know what? No one was claiming that one, weren't they? No, because Zemo was knocked out, so never mind, sorry. 2 less for uh, Hydra there, so they're only at 9, so that's not so bad. It's 9 plays 7, uh, but it did still get moved. Actually, it wouldn't move then, because nobody was claiming it. So, never mind, it's still back over here, noticing things on the fly, and that means these are not on crossbones. Everything else is as it happened though. This one was claimed, it got moved over, and the Hydro Goons took one damage and were poisoned. They have three health. The Spider Infected, Red Skull got moved by them, as did the Sentinel on the flank here, so the Sentinel got moved up again, and Red Skull got moved away again. So just trying to keep each other busy, basically. So I think that's everything, sorry, sorry about uh, forgetting that Zemo was knocked out, so obviously nobody held that cloud because uh, Crossbones got pulled off of it. But. Hydra are still in the lead by two points now, they're ahead by one at the end of the first turn. We go into turn three with the Sentinels going first. Well, in an effort to get her away from Strucker, it was Cassandra Nova that got turn three started for the Sentinels. She moved medium, paid one power, which was all she had, to pick up the Spider Infected that sat on the floor at the end of the turn. Then she just did her basic signing bolt on Sin, trying to sap some power in the process. Did not, but did manage to do one whole damage. So the first activation for Hydra this turn was Crossbones, they started with an overpower on the heavily wounded Sentinel here, it's only got two health left. And it didn't, do my, it didn't do any damage but he gets placed within one regardless which put him within range two of Cassandra. So then he did a basic attack on her and it did much better against her one physical defense thanks to being on fire. And it did four to her so she's very much dazed. She dropped a Spider Infected which he has paid one to pick up and is now holding on to it. The Wounded Sentinel on the left flank hopped up on top of the Daily Bugle stand and then used Suppression Protocols on Baron Strucker, uh, the 8 dice, or is it the 8 dice version? Yes, because it's 9 dice in the Prime, yep, sorry. And would have done a bunch of status effects for Wilds, again, doesn't matter, got 4 damage thrown him, which has dazed him, he wasn't holding an objective or anything like that, but at least it removes him for the turn. Sin was up next for Hydra and activated her Rapid Fire Pistols, 4 dice physical, but 
again the rapid fire is just a trigger, it's just active. Uh, first load of rounds did nothing but the second lot managed to do 2 damage to the sentinel here which was enough to daze him. So he is busted and we'll get to talk about the daze side of a sentinel card next turn. But that was the same action because it was a rapid fire. So for our other action she moved medium back here to help Zemo capping the Terrigen Cloud there. So turns are getting much faster. Second last activation for the Sentinels was the Sentinel Prime himself eventually moving to where you can see him so he is holding the Terrigen Cloud because he's the only healthy character there. But before that he activated his 9 dice physical suppression... Uh, what is it called? Suppression protocols? Let's double check, yes. Yeah, suppression protocols MP2 for him. And for 4 power. Did them on Zemo and did 5 damage. So Zemo on his day side went from alive to dead in one go. He is out of there but also removed an activation from Hydra and that means they only have Red Skull left so they're going to be taking priority as a result of that but a threat is gone from the table. So the Hydra goons reposition slightly just realised they also could have actually attacked it doesn't matter as it turns out because Red Skull also moves slightly his basic attack is range 3 so he could reach the sentinel up on the roof here didn't put the damage down next to him but he took 3 which is exactly enough that both normal sentinels have been dazed this turn. He dropped his Spider Infected, uh, Red Skull can't pick it up because he's holding one, so it's been placed behind Strucker right there. And it'll be ending the turn stand there because Bullseye, even if he could get over there, also can't hold another one because he's holding one. But it is over to him to end off the third turn. Bullseye didn't do that much with his turn, he chucked some throwing knives at Crossbone, the damage was sitting there. He did take one damage, he could have used I Never Miss even if he hadn't done that. Did not opt to use Inured to Pain to get rid of that because I think it still has to be a minimum of one anyway. So Crossbones is up to three damage in total now. Got three left on his healthy side. Then Bullseye retreated medium. He's just holding on to that spider infected and running away. And that takes us to scoring then for the third round. So at the end of battle round three the Sentinels have started falling at least in terms of getting dazed. Points wise though the uh, Hydra side had two spider infected that turn I believe. One on... Red Skull won on Crossbones for two victory points, and they held the far end of the table's Terrigen Cloud for two more, making them gain four in total and taking them to a total of 12. The Sentinels held two Spiders, or Spider Infected rather, because one was left on the floor, for two victory points, and they held this Terrigen Cloud, because it was being held by the Prime, who was a healthy side, and Sin was on her wounded side. So that took them up to 12, uh, 11, sorry, so they've closed the gap. There's only one victory point in it. The Terrigen Cloud here was moved ever so slightly, it did one damage to the Prime, doesn't poison him because he's immune to it. Everyone holding a Spider Infected except the Prime was moved, so Bullseye got moved there. Crossbones got moved down there. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Red Skull got moved up there. And I think that's it, right? Because there was one over Spider Infected on the table and one didn't get moved. Yeah, I think that's right. Both regular Sentinels flipping their cards. Strucker flipping his card, Cassandra flipping her card. All the flipping of cards and Hydra have first activation as we go into battle round 4. Baron Strucker got the turn started but he ended up attacking one of the Sentinels so let's quickly cover what they do on their wounded side. The, the normal Sentinels, uh, we won't cover the Prime, the Prime acts a bit different on his flip side. The normal Sentinels on their flip side they only get one power after they've activated from their power core because it's damaged and their basic attack changes in such a way that they get extra potential for damage from crits. Uh, rolling two extra dice instead of one I think it is but they also damage themselves so I'm mentioning that now because Strucker after paying one power to pick up the spider infected on the floor next to him spent four on the world is mine seven dice range two physical and he would have healed on damage done he smacked that into the sentinel on the roof up there and managed to do four damage to it and on their flip side the regular sentinels only have six HP which ain't great they go down from seven to six so that's him down to two health remaining and uh, in a spot of bother and if he tries to do his basic attack he could just explode. Sandra Nova was first up for the Sentinels. She did a basic psionic blast into the two Mystic Defense crossbones. It did very well, it did four. He could have inured to pain that down to three when admired still enough that he dazed. He dropped the spider infected he was holding. She paid one to pick it up and then for her other action moved medium to be amongst her robots over here heading towards the Terrigen Cloud. There is a bit of a strategy here, we'll see if it plays out. So what followed in Hydra's next activation was the weirdest game of tag we've ever seen. Sin activated and uh, did her automatic pistol attack on Bullseye. Managed to do nothing to him I think with that first one. He then activated Parting Shot. 
meaning she, he dealt one damage back to her, moved small. Oh sorry, she activated hit and run first because she anticipated this. Followed him, did the same again, and he once again used parting shot and pulled back again. So they managed all said and done to do two damage to each other. It was a little unclear because it does say once this attack is resolved, then rapid fire kicks in. But it also says when an attack is resolved for parting shot, you can choose to kick it in. So it's a little sure, unsure which one activated first. It doesn't matter, rolled it out anyway. And this is the max damage. So it wouldn't have made a difference. Uh, I think he already had one damage on him though. So he is on li he's alive on one health. But he did live. That was really the only thing Sin could do because she doesn't have an objective on her. She can't outhold this objective and she's in no man's land compared to where the rest of her team is that are still alive. So to try and take a bullseye was the best bet. Didn't quite achieve it. So if things continue the way they're going, it's actually going to be a bit of a weird stalemate where it's going to come down to a difference of one point regardless of how the final turn plays out. We can cover more of that later, but a bit of a silly activation, the sentinel that was up here in the building, he activated and did his basic attack to try and take out the Hydra soldiers just for fun. You roll two extra dice instead of one for any crit, but after the roll is completed, it's kind of like the war machine thing, after the roll is completed for every crit he takes one damage so there was a very real chance he could have just offed himself. As it turns out he rolled literally zero successes. Uh, so no. <laughs> Should have threw in some extra dice actually, didn't bother with that, just did the four. Then he moves small in this direction to secure uh, this end of the table because the sentinels very much hold this end of the table. The surviving Hydra are holding this end of the table. That's unlikely to change, but I guess we'll see. Well, this is a thing that happened. Red Skull activated and he just moved, but the Hydra Troopers had to move first. They moved where they are there, and then they did their range 4, 4 dice basic attack on the Sentinel. Uh, it did really well. They did 3 damage to him, so the Hydra Troopers, of all things, just took out a Sentinel. He is gone. Now, if the Sentinel Prime had uh, a bunch more power on him than he currently has, because he hasn't activated this turn yet, yeah, so he doesn't have enough, he can, usually, he can heal a dazed uh, normal Sentinel bring them back to their healthy side. I don't think he can resurrect them though. I think if they're gone, they're gone. So either way, that is it. Um, that was the final Hydra turn. We still have the Prime and the other Sentinel to go. They're just gonna try and murderize Sin, basically. But if things don't change, it seems like that World Domination Tactics card is gonna be the thing that gives Hydra the win. So we can basically cover all that right now. The other regular Sentinel activated first did his Suppression Protocol. Suppression Protocols does not change on their day's side. There's no risk of self-injury. Did it on Sin, did 4, only needed to do 3, so that is her out there as well. So then it was just a case of movement. He moved to just block Crossbones a little bit for his next turn. The Prime doesn't need to do anything. He's the healthy guy who's holding the point for them. And Bose, I just moved up there to help just in case and to get away from Crossbones. So that does take us to the end of the turn. Uh, and we'll add up the points. And yeah, I think that World Domination card is the thing that kind of screwed the Sentinels. <laughs> Alright, so at the end of turn 4, this is actually hilarious. Uh, let's, let's talk about the, the points. The World Domination card earlier was holding both the secures for Hydra, gave them one extra victory point. And with what has been gained this turn, we'll have to come over here and have a look at where the Hydra people are over here in the top left corner. Hydra's got two of the Spider infected on uh, Strucker, Red Skull, two victory points. They hold their uh, Terrigen Cloud for two. That takes them to the 16 to win. The Sentinels, they have three Spider Infected on Cassandra, on the Prime, and on Bullseye, and they also hold the other Terrigen Cloud, which takes them exactly to 16 as well. However, there was an inevitable betrayal played by Hydra, which is so fitting. During the cleanup phase, before victory points are scored, an allied Hydra character. Oh, wait, it's only on one character? Does one character have that many? Uh. Yeah, Red Skull did. He's just been hoarding it, he hasn't spent any. Yeah, Red Skull did. Ah, oh, he almost didn't. Okay, I thought it was like everyone pitched in, but no, you have to have one character who has eight, but yeah, Red Skull didn't spend any of this game. Uh, choose an enemy character within two. Oh, it has to be within two! It is a draw, never mind. Okay, fine, so it would have to have been like if Crossbones was there. Alright, that's a lot more, uh, uh, less bad then. Alright, we, we thought that this meant that the Prime counts as a, a Hydra, character for the turn which means they get the two for there as well and win 18 to 14 but no has to be a character within two choose an enemy character within two yeah so red skull would have to have been there to make it happen okay that's not as hilarious then it would have been perfect if inevitable betrayal had actually won the game for hydra there 
it would have been so fitting. Because it makes the ally count, or the enemy count as an ally on secures for the turn. But never mind. That means it might be the first ever, or definitely the least likely result. End of turn four, both sides have 16 points, and that is a draw. So as we end up the video, just going to quickly talk about some feelings regarding the Sentinels. Can't really talk about the new Red Skull. He was doing his job, his base attack being range 3, 6 dice is really nice. Didn't really get to sample the tactics cards associated, like he can hurt himself to do a massive energy attack uh, with the Victory Assured card, I think it is. He didn't need to do that. Um, he just kind of held his corner. Might have been a bit different if, say, Strucker was on the flank of the table down here and Sin was up with him or something. You might have got to see him do a bit more. But just the way that it worked out, the most of the fighting was on the, the flank that he was not on. So I didn't really get to see. what The Hydro Troopers took out a Sentinel, though, so there is that. Speaking of the Sentinels, I think I mentioned during the recording, um, it is a bit weird that there are only three physical defence. They're obviously very large targets. Uh, they're four threat, four threat, five threat, I think, respectively, for the, the Prime. The Prime seems really good. He excels, generates a nice amount of power from turn two onwards. He's dangerous. He can do a, a nine dice physical turn two, which is pretty powerful. The normal Sentinels, though, they don't seem that great. They, they're bulky, they're annoying to get around. It's very easy to kind of block them on secures if you have enough little people. And their basic attack only being four dice unless you sink in more power does kind of mean... It's a little weird, like, do you pump up that attack turn two? Or do you do a suppression protocol, hope to get a bunch of wilds, apply some status effects? Not sure. All in all, though, the three of them, I think, added together to 14, so I'm getting the power costs wrong. Hang on a second. What was, I mean, their threat costs. Yeah, the prime is five. Oh, no, the other two are four. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's actually 13, then. I'm miscounting, aren't I? Yeah. So it doesn't cost a lot to bring them in. Cassandra's obviously five, so that fits in, or fills in a lot of the space. She's necessary if you want to do some of the more fun tactics cards that we didn't get to see, sadly. We didn't get scrap metal because she wasn't close enough when the one did die. She can make it explode. Directive 1 was just for anti-line of sight and cover and whatnot, which didn't really matter for this game. And the online operational was to bring back a Sentinel that's wounded. So we didn't get to see all the fun stuff Sentinels can do. There's definitely potential for the Prime. Not so sure about the regular ones, at least in a list like this. Bullseye pulled his weight for a 2 threat. He's a great 2 threat. Um... But anyway, that's enough blathering. Thank you very much for hanging around and coming back. Uh, apologies again for the hiatus, obviously. But what can you do? A little bit slower video releases until the end of the year. As I said, at the top of the video, but hopefully we'll get back into the full flow in 2023. If you want to show your support, please do leave a like. Or if you want to go above and beyond, consider becoming a channel member or pressing the thanks button or checking out the Patreon. I appreciate it. It's all reinvested in the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day. And ta-ta for now.